All right. So, hello everyone. I am Dr. Tushar Mehta. I am an orthopedic surgeon and a faculty for orthopedics as well. This video today is a very very special one, personally for me, because you have a very senior orthopedic surgeon who not only specializes in orthopedics but as a master of another subspeciality, orthopedic oncology. He is not only senior to me but more than an elder brother to me. And first of all, I would like to introduce him. He is Dr. Manish Puthi, a leading orthopedic onco surgeon from Rajiv Gandhi Hospital, Delhi. Sir, a warm welcome to you, sir. Yeah, well, I warm. Thank you, Dr. Tushar, and hello, everyone. So, uh, first of all, I would like to give all the listeners and viewers here a little brief about Dr. Manish. Uh, Dr. Manish Pruthi is an MBBS from uh, Mulan Azad Medical College from 98 batch. After that, he did his MS Orthopedics from PJ Chandigarh. And then subsequently, he finished his SR ship for three years. And then for the next two years, he was a fellow of orthopedic oncology at uh, Tata Memorial Hospital, Mumbai. And uh, right now, he is a consultant for last more than three years at orthopedic, for orthopedic oncology at Rajiv Gandhi Hospital, Delhi. And apart from that, he is a coveted member of almost every orthopedic oncology community and committee of the country, a leading educationist, a leading uh, motivator for all the uh, orthopedic community. So this is a brief interview about, uh, brief intro about Dr. Manish Pruthi. Uh, sir, my first question to you today is why orthopedics? Uh, when did you decide that you want to venture into this field and what was the passion behind it? So as far as orthopedic is concerned, Dr. Tushar, I always used to love anatomy. So, and one thing was very clear that I wanted to become a surgeon. From my second year of my resume, my MBBS, I knew that I wanted to become a surgeon. Mm -hmm. So I always, because at that time we didn't know, we didn't have much exposure of orthopedic. So usually we think we'll become a general surgeon. And that was also my dream. So I wanted to do general surgery from AIMS and I missed it by first waiting. So during the same session, I got orthopedics at PGI. So I joined ophthalmology at AIM for 15 days. As soon as I get a call from PGI orthopedics, so I thought nothing like it. You wanted to become a surgeon, you are getting a best branch in the surgical specialty. So I thought there's nothing looking back. So I joined orthopedics at PGI. So probably when they say that surgeons are born, so you are, I think, one of them. I don't know, but I liked anatomy. So I thought the best way to use my anatomy knowledge is doing a surgical branch. Okay, okay, okay. So so I think you yeah. turned anatomy into surgical anatomy. Yeah, correct, maybe. And then it landed up into orthopedics and that's why, you know, we are fortunate enough to have you in the plan. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Pichat. My, my, my next question is that... Uh, uh, once you, you know, entered into orthopedics, you started doing MS orthopedics at PJ Chandigarh. I'm sure it is one of the premier institutes of the country. But uh, once you were done with your MS, why I'm asking you this question? First, I'll give you a brief on that. Uh, probably this video is going to be watched by many people who have just entered into first year of residency of orthopedics, be it MS or DNB or diploma. Somehow, this video will be watched by those people who are into final year uh, residency, final year PG. And they are into a fix that how to proceed ahead. One thing that I really liked about when I, I went through your bio, when I, of course, I know you for a long time now. So one thing that I liked that post MS, you did an SR ship, which was uh, almost for about three years, and then you entered into a fellowship. So I want to know about your view that once you've finished MS Orthopedics as one at one of the most premier institutes of the country, what were you looking at? So there are two things. First thing is why I wanted to go into oncology. And second thing, why I, I ended up doing a three and a half year post MS in a general orthopedic before shifting to oncology. Yes. Fine. So the if I if I want to answer the first part of the question, like I was at a very good institute, PGI Chandigarh, where most of the orthopedic subspecialties were very well developed. We had a very good trauma surgeons like Dr. Ramesh Sain, very good orthoplasty surgeon, Dr. Nagi. But somehow the oncology was like no one was doing that, that much dedicated oncology practice. So, and then there's a case which happened during my practice, which actually gave, gave me a lot of insight, like there should be something to be done for this specialty. So I still remember that she was a young lady with a pathological factor and a very new, newlywed. So 
she already had two three surgeries outside PGI and then she came to us. The biopsy slides were reviewed. There was no malignancy in that. So we ended up fixing that case as after the discussion with the pathologist. But uh, two three months down the line, because we were residents at that time, we didn't get the follow up of those patients. But two three months down the line, I visited my consultant's room and I saw that that patient was sitting in her chamber. So in his chambers. So then, as soon as I saw her, I could recognize her. and i saw her chest x ray and seeing that chest x ray although i have never seen lung metastasis by that time but i could see that the lung is studied with lung mets so at that time i realized there is something that we are missing in oncology here whether it's an integrated onco care or something that is missing so if given a chance in my life i i thought ki i will do oncology so that maybe in a northern part of india we can improve the clinical aspects of the patient care in on orthopedic oncology so at that time was my first insight okay maybe this is a specialty which is not up to the mark in northern part of india so i didn't know about much about at that time about tata or the southern part of india but because i was learning mbbs from mmc ms from pgi so i thought yes the oncology is something which is not maybe not up to the mark and maybe there is a scope a lot of scope of improvement in this specialty because we already had one of the best orthoplasty surgeons at pgi dr nagi one of the best arthroscopic surgeon dr dillo pediatric orthopedic surgeon dr gill but somehow the oncology part i thought ki there is something that can be improved here so that was my first insight maybe if i given a chance i'll do an orthopedic oncology practice now going to the second part of the question like why i choose to do 3 and 1/2 years of ssh post ms before jumping to oncology first thing is in in northern part of india most of us are not aware as your question is ki what to do after you finish your ms yes. so most of us ended up joining an sr post because i think that is the easiest way to go yes. so because we think ki okay let's join an sr post at some of the good medical college and then we'll think about our career so that is what i also did because as soon as we finish our ms i got a sr post at ucms so i thought let's join and then think about it then think about how i'll get a post in oncology so that was one of the reason i joined an sr post but yes over the years i realized that uh, doing a good training is also important in general orthopedics so i wanted to be a confident onco surgeon so a confident orthopedic surgeon like with a good concept with con- confidence in basic plates nails doing a little bit exposure of spine pelvic acetabular trauma before i thought i'll go into a specialty so by the end in between rest of your personal life happens so the things can get delayed but yes ultimately my goal was very clear to have a good training in oncology and that is why i landed up at chatham memorial hospital after finishing my src okay so that was i think in short Okay, so I have a question, and probably I would ask for a suggestion. There are there is a significant chunk of people who will be grad who will be post finishing their post graduation of orthopedics, and their exams got uh, probably uh, I would say delayed because of this COVID thing. Uh, they will be finishing off hopefully by July or August, and then they are in a fix that whether if like I I can tell you a question because it is asked to me often that sir I think I can uh, pursue arthroscopy. why should i waste my one year into senior residency i think i should directly enter into my uh, fellowship what is your take on that you are experienced you have done everything you have done sr ship then you enter into fellowship i mean what is your take on this which with which we can give a suggestion to the people who are asking us see my personal suggestion and this was the same thing which has been told to me by my teachers from pgi from chandigarh that i think the 3 years of residency is not enough whether even if you have done lot of clinical work but you have you have not sit in the opd discussing with the patient the clinical decision the follow up of those patients yes. so i think that part that part you will learn you become a mature surgeon only when you see okay this is what is happening to your patient it is easy to put a nail but if that fracture is not united that only you will come to know over the years Whether that is healing or not, so I think if not three years of assessment, I think you require at least minimum of four to five years of your resident training before you join a specialty. 
because i am very clear cut about one thing at this stage of my life is that you have to invest in education yes fine and investment in education is time there yes. is nothing like a three there is nothing like a three months fellowship there is nothing like one month observership which will can make you an arthroplasty surgeon or an arthroscopic surgeon so even if you want to learn an arthroscopy you have to spend one to two years in arthroscopy you cannot think ki okay now i have finished my ms i'll do 3 months at korea and then 2 months of arthroplasty and i'll start my practice that is a very shortcut and you will can never become a mature surgeon yes so i think there are no shortcuts here invest a lot of time in your basic orthopedics before jumping into specialty you will not be late because then your career graph will be very steep if you have learned well yes. otherwise your career graph will remain slow so i'll tell you like in oncology we do lot of spine and most of my spine work i have done at chandigarh Med- medical college chandigarh under dr raj bahadur at that time i learned spine and if i have not done my sr ship at that time i could not be doing those procedure which i do regularly now as a spine oncology so i think that part has helped me a lot in doing a spine oncology part because now i am confident in basic spine i can do an oncological aspects of spine so i think you you cannot think you will become only an arthroscopic surgeon and you will not do be doing any trauma sometime you have to do trauma sometime arthroscopic surgeons are doing a shoulder fracture and they are doing an arthroplasty so unless you are exposed to all the specialties having a decent training i think you should not jump maybe i think 5 years is minimum that i will suggest as a resident training if not more i think sir this is, is my perception this is one piece of advice i'm i'm telling you sir this is one piece of advice and i think this is the most important one i am telling you i get uh, messages i meet uh, people who are just joining or have joined the first year of post graduation and they are making up their mind that by 2024 i will be out and 25 i will be doing arthroscopy and 2026 i will settle down as an arthroscopic surgeon i just smile probably all that is all i can do i just you know i just smirk and them I, with a small smirk i just leave the room because i know that this is something which is not going to help because at the end of the day whether in surgery or in orthopedic surgery there is incubation period you have to go through that you have to you you were very right when you said you have to correct become a orthopedic surgeon then to become a great orthopedic onco surgeon so you just cannot ignore you know the entire specialties of orthopedics just thinking that i will tubularly i will have a tubular vision and i will go into one very very great piece of advice sir Hello. my next question to you sir why oncology i mean i'm sure uh, your see you you quoted one case of that lady about a pathological fracture but still i mean your friends must have been going your peers must have been going into you know spine and scopy and plasty why oncology i mean or, or there is another part of my question that when you started your fellowship uh, in orthopedic oncology at tata mumbai what was that first thought i mean you must have had a lot of dilemma i'm sure over there yeah so when i appeared for tmh interview there were not many people at that time appearing for this kind of oncology interviews plus there was a post for one year versus a two year post so i was very confused and i have already done six years of residency and and i was very thinking okay let's take a shortcut do one year of post i was offered both the post i thought let's take a one year of a post and then start go back go back and start your practice but then few of my seniors suggested me no if you are taking an oncology then take it for two years then second thing was when okay i decided okay chalo let's everyone my all my teachers have advised me to take it for two years okay i'll think okay, okay let's take it for two years i took the post for two years but then the first three months were totally a cultural shock because i was very happy doing a both bone forearm plating or a lower end radius plating excellent result three months the fracture healed and patient is fine and then we what we were treating there was skin cancers fungating tumors soft tissue sarcoma which we have never seen in orthopedics yes. because during our orthopedic training all this patient goes to general surgery and i think 40% of our work at tata was skin cancers soft tissue sarcoma which we have never been exposed so i was thinking what i am doing like whether actually i am doing orthopedics or i have left orthopedics so i thought maybe i think oncology is not the thing in orthopedic maybe it is a some different specialty someone else should do we should not as an orthopedic surgeon we should not be doing this but over the years when you 
like in get involved in that subject then you start liking that and then there was a lot of bone tumors and then you realize that the skin cancer soft tissue also requires much more knowledge of a limb which an orthopedic surgeon has as compared to any other general surgeon so then you will realize okay these are your positive points and as an orthopedic surgeon that is why you can do these surgeries much better as compared to any other person so i think it, it initially it is a cultural shock i have consulted many people before joining oncology whether i am taking a right decision or not frankly telling and i and i i asked them the same question sir what, how how did you choose oncology i asked them the same question they said i liked it everyone said no i i always thought i will do oncology but i was not very sure when i got a fellowship so i was very confused but then we slowly i matured okay no it is the it is a good specialty and tata was a wonderful institute so all that things helped me in gaining a confidence but it was a little difficult decision from general orthopedic practice to shift into only an oncology practice so the difficult time in this but but that's a blessing to all that the what i think all the patients of orthopedic oncology that we have you in delhi uh my another question sir now that i want to ask that when you are about to finish your uh, training into orthopedic oncology i know you personally for a long time you finished your uh, fellowship and then you entered into tata and then you went into another big corporate hospital of mumbai kokila ben Uh, how were you looking at your future i mean uh, 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 see as a i did uh, post graduation in, into orthopedics i started my career just like any other person i did some sr ship and then i entered into orthopedics i started trauma i was probably not that patient enough but still for a couple of years i was impatient i was not looking at the silver lining i was not hopeful of getting or establishing a successful practice you had invested such a long time how were you looking at things once you were done once the moment you came out of it how uh, simple was it for you was it difficult for you how was it like so when i finished my fellowship at tms i always wanted to continue for a little longer maybe another year more but due to some personal reasons i thought ki okay i'll shift back to delhi and that was my original aim was also to improve the clinical practice of orthopedic oncology in northern part of india but frankly telling even being the first i can say a fellowship trained surgeon in delhi in orthopedic oncology i and going to almost all the hospitals of delhi i didn't get any job so because no one at that time i finished my fellowship in 2012 and no one at that time was willing to take a full time orthopedic oncologist because most of them were interested in arthroplasty or a spine or a trauma surgeon but no one was interested in get taking an orthopedic onco surgeon because everyone knew ki the patient's load is not that much they will not be able to justify the salary and but all the hospitals were offering me attachment okay you come and join but we cannot offer you any salary so that was my initial struggle when i came to delhi and because i i in fact went to each and every hospital that you can name in delhi i went to each and every hospital but <laughs> no one was ready to take me so i was little shocked i thought okay i have done ms from one of the best institute i have done senior residency i have done fellowship now what more you want but yes but the market is totally different uh, they because they need patients on your name which is very difficult initially to start with so it was a blessing in this guy i went to chandigarh and met my professor there so the sir offered me an assistant professor post at chandigarh so i thought let's join assistant professor there because it's a good department and i can actually get a good platform to start an oncology practice and that is what happened so i initially moved to chandigarh after struggling in delhi for almost 4 or 5 months but then it's a story so <laughs> everyone has a story yes 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 But over the years now Delhi has matured, and now Delhi has three dedicated orthopedic onco surgeons, and I think the fourth one is also ready to join somewhere. So that is good. So so uh, so when you were at Chandigarh, you joined as an AP over there. Yeah, I joined as an assistant professor. Okay, so I think uh, this is also a kind of a story, but a beautiful one and a struggle that you had to face. 
uh, probably i think sir that again leaves a mark on all the listeners and viewers here that even if you take up a branch a clinical surgical branch like orthopedics and you specialize into it but still there is one element attached to it that you have to follow your passion and then you have to cater to the needs also i think we have to cater to the needs of the public also and uh, gradually i think wo bolta hai na ki ek click lag jata hai i mean ab ab ek wo click chahiye aapko life mein kabhi na kabhi to you 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 need to wait you need to wait for your chance and you have to prepare well so that as soon as you get a chance you should be able to justify it if you have not been trained well and suppose someone calls you to do a surgery and if you are not confident i think that is the end of your career so but yes if you are trained well you are confident then i think you will get a chance maybe it can be delayed by one or year or two year till that time everyone understands okay but yes ultimately the growth will happen if you are trained well that is my perception in this specialty any specialty of orthopedic i guess and patience is the key patience obviously is the key i think that everyone understand there is no rushing day you cannot just think ki okay i'll i'll operate two patient today and I'll, i'll operate four patient tomorrow i think what matters is the good results and the your your reputation spread by word of mouth than anything else there is nothing like i think social media publicity or anything but most important thing is your reputation among your peers which happens over the time it cannot happen in a day yes i think that is the key for a long term practice sir i have been with you i have seen you i have been with you uh, how do you i mean uh, this is a question that came to my mind a couple of times but i have never asked you in person uh, so much of oncology all around so much of malignancy is all around so much of hopes shattering a couple of times of course when you know things don't turn out the way all around how do you keep uh, yourself mentally calm uh, cool composed because i've seen you in the operation theater i have i've been with you i know you well but you you are a very calm person and you just take things very lightly it seems as if you take take things lightly but i know that you don't take them lightly you go beyond uh, you know what is required for a patient but seeing every malignancy all around kaise dimag ko kaise thanda rakhte ho aap so i think the oncology is a very what you can say it takes a toll it it is a stressful branch in both ways first thing is as you are saying the psychological aspect of the stress second thing is the surgeries are very challenging yes. they are very difficult very long so and you almost get tired uh, uh, like uh, you are drenched after a major surgical resection especially a pelvis or a sacral resection which can last up to 12 to 16 hours so both the aspects you need to see first thing is a physical aspect that is very easy because when you have prepared yourself for that you have once you have mentally prepared you have thought okay this is the time that is minimum for this surgery and you cannot rush in this surgery i think you can easily take care of the physical aspect maybe if you are very tired take a break in between a small 15 minute break doesn't matter in a 12 hour surgery yes sir okay so that aspect i think most of us can handle as a because in post graduation also we are used to working 12 to 18 hours minimum for everyone everyone has done that now coming to the psychological aspect i think what we see only is the positive side we know we have setbacks we know that we fail our patient a beautifully done surgery also patient present with the lung metastasis but what we can only focus is the positive side in the sense we have a good 70% cure rate in osteosarcoma now which was 15% some 30 years back so we have come and gained 55% now we are able to do many limbs sparing surgeries many joint sparing resections many physial sparing resections in children so what we see is what best i can offer this patient now the patient has a sarcoma there is no question in that now what best from my side i can offer to improve his quality of life and i have to think not the quality of life now so what we are not doing is a patient of a 65 years who require a tkr and we know she will work walk with this for 15 years what we want is a 6 year or a 10 year old child in which i am doing a surgery and he has to walk in this limb for next 70 years yes. so it's a huge difference so what we see is a positive aspect like what best we can do here so that is i think what 
keeps us going on we keep innovating orthopedic oncology is very challenging we keep innovating we keep thinking okay how to spare its joint how to spare its spices how to spare the growth plate how to balance the growth so i think that all that if you keep engage yourself in the good positive aspect of the t- tumor treatment i think you will not be too much troubled but yes there are some difficult situations like once i remember this is this was this happened in mumbai only so one of my patients parents came to us patient developed metastasis within 3 months of the surgery and they were very very sad very they had a very big setback because the child was 17 at that time and at that time they did they asked me sir what to do now what what is there for us now and frankly i didn't have any answer so we also see we are emotional you know we are we cannot say ki we are treating only a body we feel the pain okay so but you feel bad but yes then the next patient comes who require your full attention so then i think you move on attention from that previous patient to the next patient who is still pre operative who requires your full care unless otherwise that patient will also be in a trouble so i think you move on as the next patient comes as your next challenge comes and keep looking for a positive side rather than keep the setbacks will keep coming but i don't think you can dwell in that that is what is my perception is sir the good psychological built up is also required if one wants to pursue onco surgery is what i feel i mean that's a very very important prerequisite for that so any particular case that you wish to mention like any any particular incident any particular case of late that you remember uh, you know uh, something something that you feel is uh, that is that you can share with uh, you know the orthopedic residents listening to us see there was like many challenging cases that we have operated i think all of the orthopedic onco surgeons have operated but then i could remember one or two very interesting case that i can share with you so this was a 24 year old patient as i remember so he actually presented with a hip pain and he didn't come to us he went to some other institute in delhi and he had underwent a ct guided biopsy at that time it was reported as fibrous dysplasia he was asked for observation then again his pain increased again a biopsy was done again fibrous dysplasia so again he was put on a symptomatic treatment then he changed his hospital went to another hospital they they also said okay two biopsies fibrous dysplasia we are confident it is benign they did a curetta and cementing for the pelvic tumor and then three months down the line his symptoms worsened then he came to us so i saw all the imaging and the Uh, reports i thought is something which is missing something which is not correlating in this case so the fibroid dysplasia cannot get this much of a symptoms regularly and he has received almost all kind of a treatment so i thought let's repeat another biopsy and it was very difficult to counsel him for another biopsy but yes we did a biopsy and uh, we got it reviewed by a sarcoma pathologist also a dedicated sarcoma pathologist and it was then we found out it is a very rare tumor which is not seen in the pelvis it is seen in the tibia which is adamantinoma or in the jaw but it was almost a, like a fourth case in the world which is seen in the pelvis and now we had a very big challenge we had a bed which is contaminated because it has it has previous surgery we had a big challenge that he was a teacher by profession we were if we have to do a pelvic resection we have to give him a permanent limb second thing third thing was there was a discontinuity in the pelvis so i kept thinking first aspect i managed by a good counseling to the patient actually we sat with him with his family for almost 2 3 hours regularly for maybe 2 3 weeks for him to counsel and then we gave him some bisphosphonate injection and to ossify the bone so that it is in resection so ultimately we counseled him you will have a permanent limb but there is no other cure because this is a malignant tumor and no chemotherapy radiation works we resected his pelvis and the patient actually did much better than our expectation now he is an independent ambulator and he is now 2 years he has completed he is absolutely disease free and uh, this is now the fourth reported case in the literature and first from our country and uh, we have actually published it now in an index journal so this was a very interesting case because the diagnosis was a difficult the surgical challenge was trouble and ultimately the patient acceptability i think all that uh, happened 
in this case and ultimately the outcome was also very good which is it is very satisfying to us so that is what i can say it was, it was a very challenging reception but yes it went well i mean just listening to this case is giving me an adrenaline surge even when i am just listening <laughs> <laughs> that that is giving me a kick of adrenaline that how you must have felt through this entire process of you know doing a rebiopsy and then explaining and then counseling and then everything i mean waqai bolte hai na ki patience is the key if you have to become a great ortho onco surgeon that's great that's great sir wonderful wonderful yeah. and uh, i must tell everyone who's watching this i've had the you know privilege to be with him uh, for a you know for a good time now so he's one of the finest uh, humans also i've ever seen and as i told you in the beginning also not just a friend but more of an elder brother so just like an elder brother any piece of advice for all the aspirants for uh, for all the residents who are doing their post graduation in orthopedics maybe first second third year or probably who are about to finish their third year any last piece of advice for them how should they pursue their career yeah so just to repeat what i have said earlier residency is the word whether it is junior residency or senior residency so we should not think that doing a post graduation we have become an orthopedic surgeon we have just got a degree to practice but i think it requires some further years of training before you become an orthopedic surgeon so it is very important to invest your time at this moment because that is what will give you the future practice the because the most satisfying thing for any surgeon is a good outcome in his patient for that you have to train well there is no shortcut in training if you go to uk and see it's their training it's an extensive training it's a very long training it is not a short like okay you will become in 3 years you will become an orthopedic surgeon and uh, in next 6 months you are practicing arthroscopy that is not the case so that is what is my piece of advice do not jump into practice unless you have mastered at least one thing whether it is even doing a nailing of the femur or whether you it's a trauma upper limb trauma or a lower limb trauma just spend some time in education i think that is the most important investment that a post graduate or a senior resident can do a senior resident should not think that he is he is much bigger than a post graduate because ultimately he is a resident and he needs to more time in training yes. and you require at least a good fellowship of 1 to 2 years i will not call a 1 month or a 3 month period as a fellowship that we should not aim for also that is just i wash i guess my personal opinion of people may differ but that is my advice invest in education that will pay you a lot in long run whatever I, specialty you choose i i totally agree i second your opinion sir i absolutely second your opinion and um, guys just to repeat again uh, dr manish puthi is uh, heading the orthopedic oncology at rajiv gandhi hospital rohini delhi i'll be putting out his details uh, along with this video and uh, if you are a orthopedic resident if you are done your post graduation and you want to do a fellowship under him you can also apply for the same i'll be putting out all the details and there is one more announcement with i think i want to you know announce with this video as it ends Uh, dr manish pruthi is coming up uh, with a kind of a, you know residency program in which i would say that it will be a residency program which will be an online program in which he will be discussing certain interesting theory topics certain short cases and even long clinical discussions on various aspects of orthopedic oncology right from an entire human skeleton he will be he is already you know working on designing a course for all the post graduate residents so all the pg residents who are listening to this guys very soon you will be having a particular a uh, customized uh, you know design course for you of orthopedic oncology so those who have keen interest please watch out for the space we will be announcing that course very soon and in which we will be discussing almost every section of uh, orthopedic oncology and uh, that will be a clinical uh, you know that will be a clinically oriented uh, course in which all case discussions will be there by dr manish himself he will be taking a online lecture for you guys so with that thank you so much dr manish it's always a pleasure talking to you 
to you know have you know to, to just to chat with you itself is very enriching and uh, it gives a lot of your experience actually it tells a lot uh, i mean even for me it's uh, you know when i used to come to your place and used to sit in the opd and have a cup of tea i think uh, that was one of the moments when you you know used to discuss your excellence with me i think that is one of the probably the most interesting part of my day that used to be a very interesting part of my day working with you thank you so much sir. thank you so much thank you very much dr tushar for a great introduction and kind words thank you okay, okay. done bye bye sir bye bye